Hey everybody and welcome to Joe's Barbecue House. Today we're going to finish cooking a pork butt that I had smoked on 6 28 of 2019. And you'll see here where I froze it a couple days later. And if you guys remember in that video, which I'll show it here shortly. So what I ended up doing was taking one off at about 145 degrees because I wanted one of these for slicing. <laughs> I smoked this one to up to 145 degrees because I had every intention of turning these into slices. Well, I decided to do something a little different. I had a subscriber that requested um, or asked me if I could do a brisket where you cook it, say, right up to the stall and then freeze it and then, you know, continue cooking at a, at a later date. Well, I didn't want to do that to a very expensive brisket. So I decided to do it to this pork butt. And this is also a boneless pork butt. What I'm gonna do is get the Weber fired up. Like I said, the internal temps when I smoked it on 628 was internal temps of 145 degrees. I'm gonna go ahead and continue to smoke this until uh, it reaches internal temperatures of about 165. Then I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it and you can see here, it's, it's defrosted here. And here's some of the juices that were left behind. I'm going to save those and put them in that pan uh, when I go to wrap it. You guys will see here later. Hope you guys enjoy. Thanks. I know it's been a while since I've done a video on my Weber kettles. Today we're going to go ahead and put that, finish it off on the Weber kettle. I'm not using any wood chunks because it already has enough smoke flavor in it. What I have here is a full charcoal chimney full of charcoal. Those are Weber briquettes. I got a couple lighter cubes at the bottom. And yes, they stink. I can't stand the smell. The bottom vent's wide open. As you can see right here, I got my Cajun Bandit firing. I'm also going to use my uh, diffuser plate. It's pretty overkill, but it's a half inch thick plate of steel that I'm gonna set right on top of this, which will leave me approximately a half an inch gap around the whole outer uh, rim of this, uh, well, the inside of this kettle. But okay, once this baby's fired up, I'm gonna go ahead and dump the coals evenly across that fire grate down here. Set my uh, plate on the top and uh, we'll get this uh, reheated pork butt going on oh and by the way we are going to cook this to approximately 200 205 internal temps to see if we could get a good pulled pork roast out of this reheat here's a moiko meat thermometer that i had done a recent review a couple videos ago that you guys are more than welcome to go check out this thing is like 37 dollars after the, the extra 20 percent off discount and you just can't go wrong today will be the first day that i'm going to go ahead and use this and yes it does come in its own case Comes with the six probes, as seen here. You got three on this side, three on this side. These are here are aluminum uh, tips there. So I'm gonna put some batteries in it and we're gonna go ahead and test this thing out because I'm gonna use it over here when I get ready to put the diffuser plate on to um, monitor grate temps and the pork butt temps. Okay, so I went ahead and put the batteries in here and went to go hook up probe number one, as you can see here on the side. I don't know if it'll read that or not, but this is probe number one. Oh, I'm sorry, it's right here. You got probe one, two, three, and then four, five, six. So I went ahead and tried to plug it in to see what it would read and nothing. But if I go to plug it in here, okay, we get a temperature. And right here, it switches through all the modes. And I'll show you here in a second. I'm gonna unplug one and put it in number two. And now as you can see, probe two and probe four. So you can see right here, two and four. Now those are reading fine. Although, and I did test each other one and every other one, or all two through six works. Number one does not work. So let's go ahead and I'll even take this blue one out that you guys see that does work. Here, I'll be right back. I'm going to switch them around as you guys can see. I'm going to put the blue over here on two and then, or on one, then the green over here on four. I'll be right back. Okay. So as you can see, I have the green over here on four. And then you guys seen the blue here. See how it's not coming up as one, but I'll plug it over here in the two. And it works just fine. 
So something's wrong. This is a defective unit. I'm not sure if they're all like that. I seriously doubt it. I just probably uh, got one that's faulty. So we're going to see how their customer service is. I'm going to contact them uh, Monday. I'm going to go ahead and plug it in and show you guys that I made sure that I pushed it in. I don't want to wiggle it because I don't want to damage any of the connectors here. It's obviously not working. I'm not going to continue using this until I get a proper unit that that works. I mean, the the idea behind this whole thing is nice. I really like it. So maybe I get one that works, and we'll come back and do a review. Okay, everybody. So I just went ahead and grabbed the Maverick. I haven't used it in a while. It is pretty nice because then I don't have to drain the battery on my phone. Just go ahead and use this. Just going to go ahead and uh, keep this about 270, 275 degrees. I'm using the uh my dual lid vent mod that i did to this weber kettles the 22 inch here you'll see i put that roast on there i monitor and temps on both sides using the short probes from the maverick to monitor great temps and two probes one on each side to monitor this roast hoping that we will have success with this cook and if we don't i'm going to share with you guys and let you know but we're going to bring the internal temps, as you can see here on 1 and 2, uh, I'm sorry, 1 and 3, you'll see that these are the internal temps of the meat. This over here is the internal, or our great temps. Okay, everybody. As you can see, over on the right side there, we're at 172 and about 179 internal temps. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this thing. I'm also just going to lay it in this pan, and I want to use these juices here. From after it defrosted, I'm going to use these. And it's at a safe temp because, we, like I said, I cooked it at 145 degrees. So I'm going to go ahead and put the pork butt inside this uh, aluminum pan, pour the juices over the top, and I will return. Uh, we have some really bad weather today. We have a bunch of rain, and I just can't have my tripod out here, so I am just uh, have to hold it so it doesn't get wet. Okay, here you'll see that I just took the remainder of those juices. I just pulled them out of the refrigerator as soon as I opened it and put this pork butt on. I, do, I put that um, vacuum sealed bag in the refrigerator. Yeah, normally I like to bring it up to room temperature before I pour any juices or anything like honey or anything. On this cook, it, yeah, that was cold, but it should heat up pretty fast. I'm not too worried about it. Uh, like I said before, I'm not adding any brown sugar. So I'm going to go ahead and get this foiled up and uh, get it back on the Weber here. All right, it is now double wrapped with heavy duty aluminum foil. And as you can see, I just left the probes in there. You just let a little gap there for each side. Let the probe ends out. But it's sealed good. I just didn't want to pull them out and poke holes through the foil. Just something different I want to try. And it was nothing just to pick the whole thing up and set it in the foil pan when I had it there. So what we're going to do from here is let the internal temperatures rise up to, well, until it's probe tender. But I'm going to guess around like 195 to 205 degrees. And let's see if this thing will pull apart as if we did it. You know, as one cook. All right, everybody. We're reading temperatures of 205 degrees internal and 202 on the other side of this roast. So we're going to go ahead and see what it looks like. This is pretty hot, so I'm just going to hurry up and try to get this opened up here. Just so we can see how she's probing. See that steam coming out of there? Oh, man. Look at this. Got some extra juices down there at the bottom. I'm just going to take this skewer here and just probe for tenderness. Okay, it doesn't seem like it's pulling or going through very good. So I'm not sure this is going to be promising. Oh, it's going in like butter here. I'm getting a lot of resistance on this side. But that's okay. Yeah, see, I'm actually pushing the whole foil pan when I go in here. You see that resistance? You don't want that. This could be a fail. Okay, this here is going through nice and tender. This might be a fail, guys. I, I don't know. I think, okay, it's real tender there. Real tender there. Super tender there, but right here in the middle, it's not so tender. Okay. I got to think about this for a little bit. As a matter of fact, I'm going to let this go a little bit longer. And then we're going to let it rest for at least, I don't know, maybe at least an hour. But I'm, going ahead and, I'm going to go ahead and foil wrap this back down. Let this roll. I'll let this internal temps go to at least 210. 
Let's see, we are 203 here. And usually 205, 210 is usually when I do this. So I'm going to let it go for maybe even another half an hour and then let it rest for an hour. And I'll be back for the final results. All right, everybody, this thing has been resting for about an hour and a half. I know I said an hour, but it was an hour and a half before I get to this video. Uh, but here, as you can see, we're running internal temps because I still have the probes inside of 154 degrees on one side and 161 degrees on the other side. And here we go. We're going to do the ultimate test to see if this pulled pork or this pork butt will pull as if it was fresh. All right. So I went ahead and pulled it over here on the table. I put the, I pulled the probes out. Go ahead and get you guys a look at what it looks like. And this is what she looks like. So what I'm going to do is have my lovely wife take the bear claws and let's see how she pulls. Whoa. Here, let me hold this here. How's it pulling apart, babe? Good. Get you guys a close-up in there. Is it just like if it was fresh, babe? Yes. Okay, hold on. Let me get a shot of the smoke ring there. Look at that smoke ring, guys. Now, I'm sure that was developed from the original smoke. All right, babe, go ahead. Continue to pull. Is it shredding like it, like as if it was fresh? Yes. Very tender. Pulling apart easily. Probably can do it with your fingers. Wow. That's you awesome. Don't, you don't need these claws. Wow, look at that. Well, there it is, guys. Proof in the bag. You could partially smoke. Well, at least up to internal temps of 145 degrees. And be able to produce. Well, okay, so I did um, take this up to 195 degrees. Or, I'm sorry, 205 degrees internal. And I was a little nervous because uh, the resistance wasn't right. So I brought it up to 210. Then let it sit for an hour and a half. And look at that. Pulling apart like butter. So there you have it. Pulled pork. Smoked to 145 degrees, two days later, froze, and then reheated to a 210 degrees, sat for an hour and a half, and still get the same results. So let's get a taste test. That's what I want. Get some of that with that bark on there. Oh, it's still hot. Very hot. Oops, sorry about that. Mm. Wow. My God, that is so good. Nice, juicy, tender. Amazing. You guys, don't ever hesitate to pull off this experiment because it turned out really, really good. Hey, if you like what you saw, please comment below. Let me know your thoughts on this cook. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe. Like this video. Hey, as you guys always know, have a great day.